Hello everyone, so today we're going to be taking a look at this 2016 Volvo XC90 and special thanks to McGinley Motors, Mazda, Land Rover, Peugeot and Volvo for allowing me to come down here and review this car for you guys today. For all contact information in regards to this dealership, please see the description box below. So in today's review, we'll be taking a look at the interior of the car, I'll explain all the features work, we'll also start up, look at the engine, core, form data, take a look around the exterior, I'm also going to take the car in a detailed test drive. So we're going to do the test drive a little bit later on, but first off I'm going to fire up the car and take a look around the exterior. First thing I should show you is like the S90 that I've reviewed, it's got the newly designed key fob with the buttons located off to the sides for locking and unlocking the vehicle. But it is a completely keyless system, so as you can see the car is locked, just grab the handle and it unlocks. And then to lock the vehicle you simply press that square pattern located here on the door. So this particular XC90 is finished here in onyx black metallic. It's got full LED headlights with LED indicators and when the indicators are turned off like in the S90 this pattern here that the illuminate will be your LED running daylights and as you can see you also got your LED fog lamps at the very bottom and there's also a good bit of chrome trim in this car. And this particular XC90 is the Momentum, so it comes with these 19 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels as standard on Pirelli Scorpion tires. It's also got four wheel ventilated steel disc brakes. It has an independent McPherson strut front suspension with a multi link rear suspension. And this model is also the four wheel drive. It also has tinted rear windows as well as aluminium roof rails. And coming around to the rear. You can see it has dual polished exhaust tips, rear parking sensors. You also got the model designation, in this case it's the D5 all wheel drive. It's also got full LED tail lights. So there's three ways to open the boot. You can use the button on the key fob, the button underneath the dashboard, or you can just open it from here. And it's got a full power tailgate. As you can see, the controls for it are just located up there. With the third row seats in place, the XC90 has 451 litres of boot space. However, if you fold down both the third and second row seats, the boot space is increased to a mass of 1,951 litres. And also you got a couple of additional storage areas. You got this little one located here, just a very shallow extra storage compartment, and then you got this one. And then there's another storage compartment located off to the right here, as well as a 12 volt partlet, and you also got this little hook for any bags you want to hang on it. You also got LED lighting in here. You also got a cup holder back there and a little storage bin off to the sides. Coming along to the back seats, this XC90 has the leather off-face charcoal interior and also for a bit of extra money you can have Napa leather. It's also got aluminium trim with a bit of chrome contrast and you also got chrome door handles and of course you can fold all these rear seats down. got rear ventilation back here and as you would imagine in a car of this type there's a lot of room in it as you can see the leg room is excellent and so is the headroom and as you can see you also got this uh, centerpiece of folds down and you also got two integrated cup holders and you also got a small bit of storage there as well as a 12 volt part that located below and you got map pockets in the back of each front seat 
and you also got LED interior lighting as well okay so let's get into the front okay so let's go ahead and check out some of the interior features So both front seats are fully electric. You also got three person memory settings for the driver's seat. Your one touch automatic windows with power folding exterior mirrors. And you also got your boot release located there. It's also a little storage area located down here, nicely padded. Okay, so the part on the XC90, most cars would usually have a push button, but like the S90, there's actually a switch located down here, with start and stop located off to each side. So turn it once to the right to turn on the power, and then just apply the foot brake, and turn it again. So with the XC90, there's only two trim levels to choose from. There's the Momentum and the Inscription, but you can also choose between front and four-wheel drive. Now, they are known as the D4 or the D5 all-wheel drive. Now, this one in particular is the Momentum D5 all-wheel drive, but I'll elaborate more on the engine differences between the D5 and the D4 later on. But right now, I should tell you that the Momentum comes with a lot of excellent standard equipment. It's got a very nice three-spoke leather wrap multifunction steering wheel with electric power steering. And you also got your 10 and 2 notches located up here. And also on the steering wheel, you've got all your standard controls for the cruise control, as well as the truck computer and voice command. And you can navigate through the truck computer screen up there just by using this button. And then you can uh, navigate using them arrows as well. This car also has automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. And as I said earlier, it's got automatic LED headlamps. It also has the auto dimming interior mirror. And coming into the center console, we've got this very nice big screen. So you actually got a couple of controls located down here. First off, this one here actually opens the glove box, as you can see there. Very nice to have. And then you got uh, your front and rear defrost, your hazards, as well as your fast forward and rewind. So we'll just turn up the volume. Pretty good sound quality from the uh, standard stereo system. So, uh, if you're familiar with iPads, uh, this is actually going to be very familiar to you. It's very simple and easy to use. You've got three different screens. So, we're going off to the far left one. And you've got everything here for your uh, media. You've got your AM and FM, digital radio, Bluetooth, USB, iPod connectivity, and so on. You also can display your messages, the overall status of the car, for example. If there's anything wrong with it, it should display up here. And that there is your main back button, just like on an iPad. And then you also got you know your apps down there like Spotify, you can check your local weather and so on. You can just scroll up and down. So if you go into the middle screen, now this here is your main home screen. You got your satellite navigation. Very, very nice display there. You can also maximize it if you wish. And minimize it. And you got your radio controls located here. You can just click into that and go through all your stations and do all your tuning. And then you can pair your phone to the Bluetooth system and then you just got your car status and messages. And if I just scroll down here, you got your main settings and your owner's manual. And so coming on to the final screen here, you got all your main functions for the car. So you got your start stop system, your ESC sport mode, uh, lane keeping departure, reduce guard, road sign information, your park assist, your hill descent and so on and so forth. You can also activate your cruise control from here. So there's a lot of features to play around with. And then to go into the air conditioning, you just click on that there. And you can highlight each square to increase the fan speeds, or you can just click max. And also you got your uh, three-stage heated front seats as well as a heated steering wheel. So that really is the basis of the infotainment system. It's really not as complicated as it might look first time looking at it, but it is uh, very simple and you should get used to it in no time at all. And then located down here, you got the 8-speed Geartronic transmission. There's also just a silver button located off to the front here. And you can shift between your gears. You also highlight up on the screen. And also you've got a little bit of storage in there, as well as two integrated cup holders and a little bit of extra storage, as well as a 12-volt power outlet. 
course you got your engine uh, switch as well you also got the electronic parking brake your auto hold feature as well as the center mounted armrest that when lifted up it reveals a nice deep storage area as well as your auxiliary and usb jacks and you also got your led reading lights as well and you got vanity mirrors in both sun visors so overall the interior of the xc90 is a lovely place to be we're just going to go ahead now and take a look at the engine and then we'll take the car on a detailed test drive the bonnet release is located just down here on the driver's side footwell the only diesel engine available on the xc90 is a two liter However, where the D4 front wheel drive puts out 190 horsepower, this D5 power pulse all wheel drive puts out 235 horsepower. It has a top speed of 137 miles per hour and it also puts out 354 foot pounds of torque. And it's estimated this car can do about 49 miles to the gallon. Okay, so we're going to start out in the dual carriageway and see what the power is like. Okay, so foot down. Ooh, wow, <laughs> this thing gets up and moves. Wow. Okay, so this of course is the D5. It is much more powerful than the D4 model. And uh, wow, I mean, this is a big heavy SUV, but when I put my foot down there, I mean, it got up to 60 miles per hour in like no time at all. I accidentally went over six miles per hour. I just looked at the gauge and I was like, already? <laughs> Well, wow, no, this is a very, very powerful car. And uh, the good thing is it's always going to be pretty decent on diesel. I mean, this is probably not the most economical diesel Volvo you can buy. I mean, it is a very big, heavy SUV, and it's got the all-wheel drive system and the eight-speed gear tra transmission. But it's still going to return pretty decent mileage in the, at the end of the day. So, uh, a couple of things I should tell you driving out here on the dual carriageway. Well, first off, this car is basically an SUV version of the S90. It is effectively the exact same thing. It uh, looks the same on the outside. It has the exact same interior, same equipment, same everything really. You can get the same equipment on an XC90 that you can get on the S90. But driving out here now, I have to say it is so quiet and relaxing and it's very simple and easy to drive. And I was putting my foot down just a moment ago there trying to get a decent bit of uh, acceleration out of this thing. I just found that it was effortless. I mean, the 8-speed gear tonic transmission is fantastic. And it's just such a smooth, lovely, relaxing SUV to drive. And if I just give it another burst of acceleration, that there is half throttled and you're gone. So it's really, really fast anyway. It's certainly got a lot of power behind it. So uh, a few things you should know about the XC90. These things can get pricey. I mean, this is the momentum. And by the time you've added one or two options on them, and the options in these cars, especially if you get option packs, tend to be quite pricey. You'll easily sell over 70,000 euro trying to spec up one. But I love the interior of these uh, XC90s and of course the S90. It's very simple and easily laid out. The touch screen, as complicated as it might look first time looking at it, it is very simple and easy to get used to. And I've also got the lane keeping assist on and it highlights here whenever I'm getting close to the line and it just pulls me right back in again. But the interior is a lovely place to be. I mean, all around visibility in this car is excellent. The seats are very, very comfortable. It's got very large uh, wing mirrors, sorry. It's got the all-dummy interior mirror. It's got a very large rear window as well. And even with the third row seats erected there, I can still see out just fine. The one feature I would recommend getting on your XC90 if you're in the market for buying one is a rear backup camera. And a large vehicle like this, you probably would be wanting a reversing camera. It's just a little top tip there. But you do get parking sensors, for example, as standard. Okay, so we're coming out to the other side of the carriageway. And we'll just see about this power once more. We'll go into the right lane for this. All right, foot down. Yeah, this thing is fast. This is it's really fast. I'm pretty sure it's not good for my fuel consumption, but when you put your foot down, the power really is there. But overall, I have to say, this is an awesome car to drive. I and mean, we're gonna be taking it out onto the back roads in a minute now, and we're gonna see what the ride quality is like there. But at the moment, I'm loving the XC90. It's 
very, very nice to drive, and it actually feels like the S90 to drive, which is no surprise given that they, they are the exact same thing. And also, when you bear in, uh, bear in mind, sorry, that there is an estate version of the S90 coming out called the V90, it's probably going to cost, I don't know, maybe something similar to an XC90. So there is a lot to choose from with these cars: a four-door saloon, a five-door estate, or five-door SUV, like I have here. All right, so out in the back roads here, and I can safely say that the suspension setup on this car is fantastic it's absorbing the bumps really really well you can barely feel them in here and then there's the electric power steering I mean this car goes around corners very well we're just coming up now to a tight left hander and we will see how it does okay so just sticking it in and it handles really well good grip from the Pirelli tires of course yeah, no, it's a very nice and smooth car to drive. It absorbs bumps well and it handles really nicely. The only thing I'll say is out in these narrow back roads, you do begin to realize just how big this thing is. It is a very large SUV after all. But in saying that, out here, it's lovely to drive. It's comfortable, it's relaxing, and of course it is very quiet. You don't get much exterior noise coming in here either. So at the moment, I'm really enjoying the XC90. Nice to drive out in a dual carriageway and nice to drive out here as well. Okay, so we're just on our way back to McGinley Motors. So to summarize the XC90, first off, starting with the outside, I think this is an amazing looking SUV. It certainly stands out. I think it looks fantastic front to back. As I said, it looks just like the S90 from the front. It's got LED headlights, LED fog lights, and very nicely designed vertical LED tail lamps as well. And then coming into the interior, I mean, it's beautifully crafted, such a very nice and simple, elegant design here. The touchscreen is nice to use. I love the LCD display up here as well. And then you get into just how much room there is in this car. I mean, there's loads of legroom in the back, and you also got a pretty good size boot as well. Even with the third row seats um, up at the moment, there's still a decent amount of uh, boot space left behind. And then to drive out in the road, it's very powerful, especially this D5 model. It's very, very comfortable and relaxing. It's just such a nice, luxurious SUV to drive. It's almost up there with the Range Rover, I'd say. As a matter of fact, it is up there with the likes of the Range Rover and the Audi Q7 and probably the Jaguar F-Pace and all those luxurious SUVs in the same kind of pricing range as this. So we're just gonna finish up the review now. All the contact information regarding McGinley Motors and all the details regarding the XC90 will be linked in the description box below, so please be sure to check that out. But overall, this is an awesome SUV and definitely one to check out if you're in the market for a luxury SUV such as this, because as I said, it does compete quite a bit with Range Rovers and the likes of the Jaguar F-Pace and the RDQ7. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.